Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I attend to this year's version of The Economist event. This event will focus on two of the most critical issues of our times, sustainability and uncertainty. These, uh, both these issues are intrinsically linked between them because sustainability remains the key in order to handle and to mitigate uncertainty. Said uncertainty is widely spread. We have completed approximately two and a half years of consecutive and uh, ex externally induced uh, crisis in a very uh, fragile geopolitical and financial landscape. And according to the recent estimates by the ECB, as depicted 10 days ago uh, in the presence of uh, His Excellency the Governor during the, Go the ECOFIN meeting in Prague, uh, it seems to be a uh, there's, there's supposed, it seems uh, to be a very negative impact on our growth rate, not to the extent that the estimates uh, reported before, but yes, in the worst case scenario, there will be a very important uh, recession of the European economy of approximately 0.9%. And the inflation rates that, according to the uh, Baseline scenario will be approximately 5.5%. The worst case scenario is 7.5%. So all this crisis significantly uh, burdened the European and global economy. In these very turbulent times of the past two and a half years, and currently, Greece has been able to meet the requirements uh, the, uh, with uh, swiftness, a sense of responsibility and efficiency by promoting uh, radical reforms and changes, uh, by implementing our governmental agenda, and by upgrading, modernizing, and strengthening our country in various regards. The positive impact, the positive result of this uh, effort, and of course, the collaboration we have developed uh, may be seen uh, on the figures of the Greek economy. The Greek economy is more robust, more resilient, more extrovert. The Greek economy now uh, emits a sense of uh, certainty, robustness, and uh, self-confidence as proven by the following figures. A, our GDP is significantly strengthened. While being at the middle of this crisis, in the middle of this crisis, our economy grows at, a, at double the rate of the European average. These estimates have been reviewed uh, to the better, and this will be seen in our budget draft uh, as to be submitted next week. 5.3% for 2022, although the original uh, estimate was 3.1%. In the same period, the European average for 2022, that is, is estimated to be at around 3.1%. So we are moving way beyond the European average. And the same, it seems to be the case for 2023. Our estimate is approximately a bit more than 2% of growth rate when the baseline scenario, uh, the European average was supposed to be less than 1%. Uh, taking into account the current figures, and that's very important. The current figures are updated compared to 10 days ago. Our country's GDP will amount to 210 billion euros in 2022 and in 220 billion euros in 2023. Second point. This is more important if you ask me. Growth relies on also the amazing uptake of uh, investments and exports. This year, following a uh, last record year, we will have a new historic record in terms of uh, foreign direct investments and exports of commodities and services. FDIs amounted to 5 billion euros in 2022, which was the best performance of the past uh, 20 years. This upward trend continues in 2022 because in the first quarter, we have already went beyond 
uh, uh, the performance, uh, the 90 percent of last year's performance exports amounted to 41 percent of our 20 of our GDP in 2021, which was double the figure of the export rates we used to have before the crisis. Currently, Greece exports more than France, more than Italy, more than Spain. And I'm talking about um, a variety of uh, services and commodities because normally we focus on a sp specific uh, industry and we have uh, stunningly increased our exports when it comes to high tech products. Unemployment is shrinking. It went down six percentage points compared compared to 2019. And currently we have a historic low of the past 20 years, a very important decrease. And that means a lot. Uh, because uh, of because we have a very low uh, unemployment rate for youngsters and women. Talking about the red loans, they have they, they shrunk significantly, not the private debt, and this is something we have to work on a lot together, especially banks and servicers. They have to speed it up. Red loans at the end of 2022 Q1 were about 14.8 billion euros or else 10% of the total uh, stock of loans. It was uh, used to be 75.3% uh, or 44% of the total stock back in 2019. Last, fifth point, the image, the, um, the, the status of our country is getting better because now we are beyond the enhanced supervision status. We have uh, paid on time and before time all the loans by the IMF and we have been upgraded uh, in the past 11 years. Four of these upgrades took uh, place in the middle of the crisis. So we're back in the European normality and we are getting close to getting an investment grading, investment rank, uh, rate. Uh, great apologies. So in this context of uncertainty, of high inflation rates, of very high inflationary pressures and following a very painful 10-year period of uh, shrinking our country thanks to the hard work of our citizens and of uh, the state uh, managed to uh, register uh, stunning uh, leap ahead despite turbulences. These turbulences are not uh, far from over and nobody can predict how long these external factors will, uh, will uh, remain. So having said that, both at the European and national level, the policy that we will follow has to, to give an answer to current requirements very quickly, very efficiently, and with a feeling of uh, social justice and at the same time with fiscal uh, uh, diligence, responsibility and uh, clairvoyance so that we do not undermine the future of this country. In this context, it means the world to properly draft and implement policies that promote sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, the concept of sustainability in this long period of uh, global uncertainty and volatility has uh, risen uh, at, the, at the top of the global agenda. Europe has set as its main priority to achieve competitive sustainability by taking a turn towards a brand new development uh, model. This model is uh, described in the uh, Green Deal of Europe's end, aims at the so-called twin green and digital transition. In this context, the European strategy on sustainable financing remains the key. According to the last uh, estimates by the European Commission, meeting the targets of the European Green Deal calls by 2030 to increase our annual rate of investments by 520 billion euros. So it is necessary, especially in this context of uncertainty, to focus on adopting policies, adopting reforms and tools that will further promote uh, uh, the necessary reforms. The Greek government is tangibly supporting uh, these uh, European target setting uh, by setting a priori sustainability at the center of our political priorities. In order to, to have this transition in this new development model, it is very important to be creatively supportive. In our, it is very important to have the contribution by all productive forces of our society and economy. Uh, in this framework, the Ministry of Finance, governed by um, 
making this transition swiftly and effectively. We are currently planning new projects and policies based on four pillars. The first pillar, we modernize our corporate governance framework, also when it comes to public utilities. Following the law 4706 of 2020 and amidst the, Europe, the global health-related crisis, we strengthened transparency and sustainable corporate governance by reforming the corporate governance institutional framework, talking about SAs, that is, and uh, the capital markets. And as you very well know, last week, we further expanded this framework in order to cover public utilities as well. Second pillar, we have financial growth that's also uh, relying on sustainability. The European uh, Resilience and Recovery Plan emphasizes on green and digital transition, which amounts to 57% of our entire budget. A very recent proof of that has been uh, the uh, passing the law for new incentives to have additional deductions and discounts for SMEs' expenses on green transition, digitalization, and green economy. Third pillar, we emphasize and we plan new policies to further support uh, sustainable financing, emphasizing, of course, on the financial market and the capital markets. In collaboration with the European Reconstruction and Development Bank and the European Commission, in the context of two main projects of technical